All right, for more reaction on this rider win, uh, second in a row, it's the Canadian Football Hall of Famer, Milt Stiegel. Uh, Milt, the riders come through, and it's, uh, it's a local kid who's the hero in mm. overtime. Yes, it is. It is. And when you get an opportunity to step on the field for your hometown team, hometown team like Jackson Ford did, and make a play like that, you'll remember this forever. Mm -hmm. Not only is he a hometown player, once, uh, his grandfather once played for this team, was the GM. So he stepped in and did a great job. You know, some, there were some who were concerned uh, because he is only a backup, a special teams guy. But this is why you draft guys. This is why you put him in position to make plays. And he took full advantage of it, and you have to be happy for it's him. It's a wonderful ending for him. And uh, for Jake Dolagala, uh, there's just something about this guy. You know, he just feels, seems like he fits in really well. Didn't do anything too spectacular. He was just solid throughout this entire game. Yeah, and there's a, a story going around, and Dave Naylor, our insider, uh, talks about how there's never been any tall quarterbacks, quarterbacks over 6'3", to have any success in the CFL. But uh, old Jake is saying, hey, things are different now. Sure. As you mentioned, he didn't do anything spectacular, but he played a decent game. Over 300 yards passing, no touchdowns, uh, no interceptions. He played solid enough. And this is two games in a row where you beat two elite defenses, BC yep. and Winnipeg, back-to-back. -back. That says a lot about you. So now he has to continue to ride this momentum. You can't rest on, yeah, okay, we did beat those two teams. You have to continue playing well because you're trying to put yourself in a position to get a home playoff game. So it's good for him, good for those other players, but most important, it's good for those fans because you know they stick around and they love a winner in the, in the province of Saskatchewan. Oh, boy, do they ever end. It was great to see the game sold out today, too. Yep. Love to see yep. those fans in the stands. It's going to be sold out for the Banjo Bowl. We know about that. Let's talk about your Blue Bombers. Is this just a blip for them? Can, uh, are they going to bounce back even stronger next week against Saskatchewan? Uh, I think they're going to bounce back. It's not going to be easy to ask. You yeah. know, these Rough Riders, they have some momentum. They, they, they have confidence. And the most important trait to being successful is confidence. Their quarterback is confidence. Their defense is confidence. They're making some plays. So these Bombers just can't think they can step on the field. And I don't think they think that. But they can't just step on the field and think they're going to beat these Rough Riders. Uh, it's going to be a little bit easier because they are playing at home. Yep. They have those fans behind them, but it's going to be a difficult task for them to uh, to beat these Rough Riders, but we're all looking forward to it. The Banjo Bowl uh, it's exciting, uh, and I think it's going to be a great game. And uh, this is interesting because Zach Kalaros won't be happy. That was uh, his first loss in seven yes. career starts yes. in the Labor Day Classic. He never loses the Labor Day Classic. Will he lose the Banjo Bowl? You have to watch to find out. Mel, thanks for this. No, thanks for having me.